All right. And we are live. The Last Word with Lord Cognito and Ibantis returns hot by the campfire. And actually, hot is actually really um, accurate for what we're about to talk about later today. Yeah, so, that's, uh, that's, that's fitting as the fires will be burning. Mm-hmm. Very, very hot. Very solary hot. But, uh, E, man, what's been going on with you? How have you been, sir, in the uh, world of Destiny and otherwise? Uh, otherwise, probably more. Destiny a little mm-hmm. less, which we'll talk about. Uh, for mm-hmm. me, I saw the the new activity come and launch, and we will definitely talk about that. <laughs> this final assault is worth deep discussion on many fronts. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, mostly, from about last week when we got done playing, and then... Now, I've been playing most every waking moment with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. So we will save that discussion to the end, but as we've both been playing it and enjoying it, Mm -hmm. definitely want to talk about that one with you guys. So that one will be talked at the end. I'll try and even throw a timestamp in there for you guys, so if you want to jump into that discussion, you can. Nice. Uh, Nice. But yeah, just a little Mm -hmm. bit of Destiny where needed, uh, but mostly Mm -hmm. Star Wars just has my attention right now. It's a blast. What about you? Yeah, man. It's uh, pretty, pretty much we're in the same boat. Not as much Destiny this week. But um, Star Wars Fallen Order, of course, been uh, touching a little bit of Gears, been a lot of Project X Cloud touching for me. I've been in the beta, so now I've been doing both console streaming as well as uh, what you call the X Cloud itself, and I'm having a blast with that. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, I did uh, touch the Vex Offensive Final Assault, which we will get to. Have a lot to say about that as, as we fix our faces. <laughs> exactly. And uh, this TWAB, man, I'm not going to lie. Like, TWAB uh, revitalized me. I was going to come in with a different approach today. But then I saw the TWAB, and then my approach kind of changed a little bit. So, uh, yeah, you might, I don't think people would have been ready for my approach pre if this TWAB didn't happen. Let's well, just say that. that's um, the joys of the balancing act, that tightrope that Bungie walks very well. Um, but mm-hmm. I want to thank all of you guys for tuning in live on twitch.tv slash eBontis. Thank you guys for catching the show in live and chatting with us. So thank you guys for that one. If you guys are listening mm-hmm. on audio, you can catch us on video or live on Twitch. But if you catch us on video, it's either on the Iron Lords podcast YouTube channel. Check it out there. Or on my channel, we put the video up on both. So you've always mm-hmm. got places to watch us. Um, but before we get going, uh, we get to do our audio podcast through Anchor. So I want to give them a little shout out and a spot. So we'll take a mini break here for the little sponsor spot, and we will be right back. All right, guys. So, yeah, Anchor honestly has been great for the podcast. Thank you guys all. Uh, last few ones, we're getting over 300 listens, which is, mm-hmm. in the grand scheme, may not sound like a lot, but it's like, thank you guys, because trust me, as that number keeps growing, we just know more you guys get to hear and listen to us fill your ears on the roads or while you're walking around cleaning something, working around your house, wherever it's at, podcasts are nice <laughs> on the go. I know when I found podcasts, like, it's been a game changer for me. So if you guys enjoy us talking for two hours, believe me, it's appreciated. So Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, but yeah, we had a couple things happen with Destiny this week. We are going to start with the big elephant in the room, the Vex Offensive Final Assault. So we know going into last week, we had the TWAB. We had mm-hmm. nothing. Mm-hmm. We had the weekend. Still nothing. We knew mm-hmm. there was the construction in the tower from Ikora, and that's about it. Not a lot yeah. else. Just, just Not you know. A lot else. I think there's a dude still working. Apparently, he doesn't think he's done. <laughs> so. Scaffolding still going. He's gonna make sure it's secure. He's the maintenance crew. He's got to be out there working. <laughs> um, but mm-hmm. then Tuesday, we know is coming. It's the last mm-hmm. bit on the calendar, and the calendar this season has been. Not all, I mean, all of it's been mostly pretty solid. I mean, the raid challenge is a way Mm -hmm. to mark it, but it's overall been, like, really good. Like, we've had the, you know, dungeon, and we've had the exotics come through, and the different difficulties, Mm -hmm. and they've had, like, at least stuff that's been worthwhile putting on there. And then then we come to the end. The final Mm -hmm. three weeks of the season, Mm -hmm. we have the director's cut from Luke Smith talking about, like, narrative momentum and moving forward and you want to be there for the moment and then can't wait we can't log wait in this. on tuesday Woo. and what do we get sir cognito what do we get we get that hot fire of nothing <laughs> <laughs> we get that it wasn't totally bo- nothing we get that smooth boring transition of no cinema and speak to Ikora actually had some vocal, right? She had some vocal. She had some some things she had to say when you talked to her. And then um, 
yeah, some exposition. And it was like, hey, go to the map. Like, I saw your video. Shout out to Ebonzi. He has a great video right now discussing what I'm about to discuss. And, um, yeah, we just went over the regular old Vex Offensive with no pinnacle weapon reward and just, you know, just get out there and it's the same activity, Vex Offensive, and you get to the end and boom. No, actually, I will say this. There was some ghost dialogue about the Undying Mind during the, the, the Vex Offensive. And um, no, yeah, shout out to Sinister, no Imago Loop. So uh, that, there goes that little theory and rumor. And we get there and it's the undying mind with the same mechanics. <laughs> and the same, you know, get the cranium, shoot the shield. And all right, felt a little easier actually than the uh, other boss, I would say. And, well, see, it kind of um, depends yeah. on when you played, depending on how easy it was. I think some people went in being like, hey, I'm stocked and ready to lock, like knock it down. And then I went in on Thursday and mm -hmm. I think everybody's just farming Undying because they're just using, like, pew, pew, baby weapons, and it's just going to take <laughs> longer. So yeah. I've seen people yeah. one-phase it, though, which was not happening on the Minotaur. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then, it, you know, you did it, and they, a little more exposition about, hey, we got to keep doing this a thousand more times, and we'll eventually stop this thing. And, yeah, so that was that. And, um, you know, the tower pretty much looks the same. Um it actually, what's kind of very disappointing is it still looks like it was in construction and it's not finished. You know what I'm saying? So that's another thing. Yep. And yeah, really nothing after. So I'm going to throw it back to you, E. You got a lot to say about this. Um, you know, how, this how is, long this, you how long you got? Uh, oh, we got time, baby. We got. Time. We got, we got I got nothing but time, baby. Can't fire is hot. Oh, so, um, yeah, I'm going to give you the last word on this one. Oh dear. In the sense of your There's video. A few of those. Obviously, there's been some controversy on, I say controversy, but there's been some dialogue on Twitter. And a shout out to Lord Attic. Me and him were talking about this as well. You know, what are your thoughts about the uh, Undying Mind conclusion, <laughs> quote unquote conclusion? Yeah. So <laughs> there's a giant asterisk in the, to, at the end of everything that I say because mm -hmm. we are three days into the final assault. Correct. We correct. don't know in two and a half weeks. When the season transition comes, if in the next week something will happen, and then the final week something will happen, and then when it comes to the final season, when we go into the season of Dawn, which seems to be about fire, which we'll get to later, all of that stuff... Vagabond is killing me over there. Um, yeah, he's, di he's I'm dying right <laughs> now. He's, he's hilarious. Uh, what they want to have happen, we haven't seen yet. Mm -hmm. So the big, the transition, the moment that you want to be there for, whatever's going to be like the kick you into the next season with a whole bunch of like energy and everything and everybody ready to go. Mm -hmm. We don't have that yet is basically the nicest way I can say it. <laughs> we are. This, is, this isn't the you should have been there when moment? You not sure? yet. Now, yet <laughs> is the big key word because as mm -hmm. they've said, like the transition. Mm -hmm. Um. The transition, that's in two and a half weeks. We don't know anything about that. We don't know anything about next season, and it's in two and a half weeks, which is also, we'll yes. see. No calendar, no, mm -hmm. no whole lot of nothing. So mm -hmm. the big question there is, right now we get this new calendar activity, mm -hmm. but as you said, we go in and we get literally nothing different except the boss. You, you have to hey, transmat the him. Ghost in. Said, the ghost said a couple of lines. Okay, Ikora has a few lines. The ghost has a couple of lines, and then when Let's the boss, accurate. and then we have to transmat in the portal, which I will give them at least a small shred of decency mm -hmm. because they're not actually turning the thing on in the tower and being right. like, "Oh, we blew up the second tower, crap." So mm -hmm. we don't have to cross that bridge, which would have probably been more interesting, sadly. But mm -hmm. we don't have that one. You transmat mm -hmm. in the Undying Mind. And as you said, the mechanics are exactly the same. You have the shield up, you kill the Minotaurs, you break his shield, and he's just got the rotating shields, kill him, done. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. are no new weapons, there's no new Ooh. armor, there's no special legendary weapon, there's not a random quest, there's not even, there's not a pinnacle drop, which we'll cover that in a second, but there's uh -huh. not even a powerful drop on it anymore, which I don't even know why that went away. Yo, forgot, right? It was just, I was like, am it I in used the to play place? there. There. It used yes. to be a tier two, and then Ikora was a tier three. I remember because that was like that was mm -hmm. a weird number choice, but mm -hmm. it's 
Like, that's not even there. So some mm-hmm. people, I mean, there've been a whole lot of speculation. Undying Mind. Okay, Undying Mind was a Destiny 1 strike boss. Mm-hmm. It was farmed quite a bit because people wanted the Amago Loop, as you said. Yes, sir. Amago Loop yes, sir. was potentially, for those of you guys who don't know, a mm-hmm. near copy to Fatebringer, which a gun yes, everybody loved, which is mm-hmm. one that you won't shut up about in Vault of Glass stuff. <laughs> That's right, baby. That loop, that beautiful loop pool. Vault of Glass. But it was a really good weapon, and it was like later on in this the history of Destiny 1 when they brought mm-hmm. this weapon back, and people were like, hey, this thing actually can get damn good rolls on it. Let's grind mm-hmm. for it. Has some really good potential. They didn't bring that back. That could have been even just that alone. Just adding that in, somebody sees it drop. You like, I got an Amago loop, and dude, the world would go nuts. That is like something. One weapon mm-hmm. could have done a lot for this thing. You don't have to do an entire full quest line. Go over here, talk to twenty people. Mm-hmm. One weapon drop could have done yes. just enough to be like, hey, it's a new boss. We get a new weapon. Nope, mm-hmm. not from what we've seen at least. Again. Right. We are recording this thing on November 22nd, so if you guys are listening mm-hmm. to this like two weeks from now and we sound strange because we're real wrong, maybe <laughs> that happens. But yeah, as of now, we're talking with the facts that we know. Mm-hmm. Um, my hope, as I think I probably said it even last week, like mm-hmm. there was that portal sitting in the back, an unused portal. So you'd get up to right. the like, first floor, clear out the crystals, second mm-hmm. floor, clear out the crystals, top floor. Um, mm-hmm. There was the portal in the back. And my hope was that we could actually, like, get up there, we'd do something, and then we'd go through the portal to fight the Undying Mind in its realm or something. And Mm -hmm. even if they just took the strike room of Mm -hmm. the boss fight, because it's got a shield wall in it as soon as you go in there anyway, literally just put that room on the other side of the portal and let me fight him in there. Like, that would have been cool. That room actually with six people would have been absolute chaos if you have a bunch of ads ads in there, but also Mm -hmm. a lot of fun. I think that would have kind of given it a little bit of life and stuff like that, but nope. Mm-hmm. Nope. That, so I, in for me, it's... He's, he sounds broken. <laughs> Yo, you sound broken. I've never seen, like, you sound worse than me. Like, usually when I'm disappointed, like, I go off. But you sound like a broken man. He, like, this really hurt your soul like it did mine. I'll just... You're just reiterating your <laughs> it's just one I think they had a lot of potential in many different ways. Now, mm-hmm. this also is not a pinnacle drop. Yes. And I think... Tisk, tisk. And I, I read through, like... I posted the video up yesterday because I wanted to see some comments, and there were quite a few good ones on my video because you guys were bringing up ideas. Even Festival of the Lost had a pinnacle drop, and this doesn't. Like, this is your season. It's going to be here for a whopping three weeks. Why not give it a pinnacle slap on the hand? Mm -hmm. But why not even have this thing be a pinnacle drop? Because it's, ooh, three weeks. End of the season. We still don't know what's going to happen with levels. If Lono's Mm going to be right and we're all going back down and we're just working on that artifact again. Or if we're jumping Mm -hmm. up to it, nobody knows that. But either way, there's literally no drops from this that can help anybody even level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody jumps Mm -hmm. in late in the season. Mm -hmm. Well, their incentive to play this thing is very minimal if they're going to waste their time instead of leveling up like there's no right. very minimal benefit and if you have your excuse me mm-hmm. if you have your rolls on your weapons already that's it you're done the Put only on this the only incentive in there is for you is undying and that is probably what half the people are going to be in there doing like shooting everything with bows and fusion rifles and just oh, random yeah, 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 equipped inventories triumph. but other than that title that's I mm-mm. I don't see much going on right now. It's it's not going to get a lot of love. So yeah. what about you? Now, no, I mean, you're literally transitioning in what I wanted to talk about. Because initially, before I read the TWAP, this was going to be my tone. And, um, you know, with Broken Guardian discussion right now. Because that's where I was. I'll be honest. E, you know I love this game. And this is not a bad... Shadowkeep is not a bad DLC. Let's just put that out there. Right? No. However, we said pro- last last word, we said, you know, it's very good. It's going to be very interesting how they end this DLC. And we all agreed it started off extremely strong. You know, I think we had it right now behind, you know, battling for um, third place with Rise of Iron behind Forsaken and um, Taken Kick. And to me, ending with a, you know, a boom, a, a nice surprise. And again, we're saying this right now, November 22nd, right? In two weeks, something could happen and we can have 
those moments. Maybe we have, you know, like an Aldrin kind of moment like Forsaken had, or we have some type of thing that's the real transition. But as of now, we got to rate it where it's at. And right now, it's disappointing the way it's ending, right? It, it, it just doesn't feel good. And then for me, I'm going to be brutally honest. Like you said, I've gotten everything I need to get. I've gotten Xenophage. I've gotten most of my Pinnacles. I really don't have... Here's my main issue. With the way the Pinnacle structure is set up, it's just the Raid, Master, Nightmare Hunts, Nightfall. And my main issue is the Pinnacle activities, the majority, unless Iron Banner comes around, right? The majority of them are non-match made activities. Yep. That is annoying. And I'm become I'm some I'm becoming a solo player like you lately, right? <laughs> well, so you're, it's like you're a vampire anyway, so yeah. Yeah, I'm a vampire. So my schedule's different and it's just frustrating that I you know, I can't get a pinnacle without that's why I lived in that Iron Band. I know you was like, Why well, are you just playing Iron Band so much? That's why, because I'm like, at least I can play oh, yeah. that solo and get a chance for pinnacles. And the other thing that really is frustrating is that you're sinister. Get a timeline. Get K back. You're hilarious. Um, but you know the the thing that's frustrating is that you know when you look out to Astro Cross, he has some good videos, some good rant videos. But um, when you look at Crucible, you know, and you just look at other activities, there's there's nothing I can really do as a solo player to get the pinnacles besides this other way of just leveling up the artifact and just playing redundant stuff over and over and over again. I really want, you know, that direct path. So that's what's frustrating that if I can rank up, you know, if I, what's prestige in, 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 you know, you're not getting any prisms, you're not getting any pinnacles. There's yeah. really no incentive to play Crucible hardcore. I'm the Crucible guy. I, I love being in there, except when Iron Banner comes around. So now ha all these activities have shrunk down into uselessness for me, which then makes my incentive to play less. So, which brings me to this week. This week comes along. I'm like, all right, story beat, right? Yeah. We're going to see what's going on. Undying Mind is here. You know what I'm saying? And uh, shout out to Vagabond. He said, thank God Fallen Order came out. Word. We're going to talk about that. Thank God it did come out because I was playing that. But, um, you know, I'm going to be I'm gonna be real, E. Once I saw your video and I saw a lot of the Destiny community say what this is. Yeah. And there was no drop. There was no nothing. And it was just like, yay, you beat it. And have a nice night. I was like, I'm not doing this for like two days. I'll wait. There was no rush for me. I was like, I'm going to continue playing Fallen Order. Yeah. I'm going to continue doing these other things until we actually get something that I have incentive to do. And that's when I felt, I'm like, ugh, they're not ending this good. You know what I'm saying? So we shall see <laughs> straight up each other. Yeah, again, it's November 22nd, right? I do, I had this ar a big argument with, uh, it wasn't an argument, I shouldn't say it was an argument, but a big discussion with my boy Lord Addict. And he's like, I don't know, man. This is spooky. This is terrible. And he, you know, he's right. I can't knock that. All I'm gonna say is this: according to Luke, right, and according to the director's cut, each season is going to transition into another season with a "you should have been there" moment, with a story beat, with something. I am hopeful that this is not it, that we are going to get something that's gonna show us why Season of the Dawn is here. So I'm gonna give them that leeway because there are two weeks, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And hopefully we get that moment. I doubt it's a zero hour, you know what I'm saying? I doubt it's anything like that. No, I don't see it, that at all. Right, but if we get something narratively to the effect of, remember how cool it was when you went to um, Morris Throne and you saw that, that hourglass. Oh yeah. And we all saw it. We went crazy. You know what I mean? So hopefully, hopefully, that's all I can say. But if they don't, ooh, the Destiny community going to have a lot to say, boy, because it's spooky right now. <laughs> that's what I got, man. That's what I got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you on that. Hopefully there is something for a transition, something towards the end of the season, something to give it, you know, the mm -hmm. final send-off of the Vex, mm -hmm. like, the other thing to remember is the Vex Offensive going away in three weeks. That mm -hmm. activity is straight up gone. Yeah, I ain't gonna miss it. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, for it. some, it's actually been, like, it's been nicely, like, rewarding. You get a lot of drops in there. You mm -hmm. do actually, like, see a fair amount for not overly long of an activity. Mm -hmm. We're also, mm -hmm. when we stop that, we're also going to stop the Vex Invasions on the moon, which is going to take the yes. moon to be a little more tame. I like seeing those yes. giant... 
weird know, looking matrix circles yeah, in the yeah, sky. Like, yeah. Those look really cool. So both of those are going away. Now, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean nothing has happened to anything else in the game. Hopefully right. it does. And again, the season's going to explain that. But mm-hmm. for now, we're losing stuff from that we've been doing. Right. The moon is going to feel a little more on the tame side, which is kind of sad. Which, which we assume. Which we yeah, assume. we knew we that was coming, but it's also like... Mm-hmm. Um, but also, it's the it's the other things of like, not one other gun, not any other room, not one other mechanic, not a pinnacle drop. None of those things helped at all. Like, none of those changes that could have been put, put in... Maybe in two and a half mm-hmm. weeks, they are going to absolutely blow up the universe. Who knows? Like, exactly. maybe then it's going to go crazy. But right now, mm-hmm. at least for the activity that you did give us to play, there is mm-hmm. no nothing to give it distinction from the past seven weeks that we've been at this. There is no way to say, hey, should I really log in and mm-hmm. like play this thing? And I was like, I didn't play mm-hmm. it until yesterday. I'm going to be yeah. honest. You I know, literally, I was sitting boat, at work. Right? I was, I was not mm-hmm. going to be home for reset. I was at work a little longer than normal. I pulled mm-hmm. up Twitch just to see who's playing. I pulled up mm-hmm. like Broman and one, one or two others. And I was like, Hey, they're mm-hmm. in there. Let's see what's going on. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, okay, it looks the same. looks the same. He come. And then it just was like, all right. So I basically shut down that went, did work, came home, but then mm-hmm. I'm sitting there torn. I'm like, do I want to work on destiny or do I want to play star Wars fallen order? A new game that's exactly. freaking like crushing it right ah. now. And I was just like, I don't have, I mean, I have the undying title. I need to work on some stuff in there, but it's like, is the undying mind section of final mm-hmm. assault, anything that like is really going to pull me in right now? No. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't. So if something happens in the next couple of weeks, this is where I'll leave it. It's like, you guys know I'm disappointed because there is a laundry list of things they could have done. Mm-hmm. Some more major, like adding another room to fight the undying mind. That's not small. Mm-hmm. Right. Or, adding a loot drop or making it pinnacle or any of those other things could have been something. Yeah. So for me, if they do something else and it gives a little bit, but right now my grade on it's pretty low. Ooh. Ooh. Just as like, if you're going to, and this is the, what they really have got to learn. Their calendar matters to mm-hmm. the community. Those mm-hmm. of us that follow the Bungie, like actual blog and go see, Hey, there's this calendar. This thing has a spot on that. And if they didn't learn that with arc week, <laughs> that was the bad I time. Spit, I almost spit that out. <laughs> I didn't know that. was disrespectful. That. If you guys are listening on audio, he about sprayed his camera with coffee, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Sorry. Shout but out to Arc Week. <laughs> that was a moment Yo. on the calendar that was like, okay, this should not be a calendar thing. And I thought we learned that lesson a little while ago. Oh man, it's it's spooky, bro. Yo, but how, that's listen. that. But that's exactly how this feels. Is like this is a yeah. non-event. Even so, Lono, I, I heard him talk about it too. After I did my, I was like, I'm I want to record mine before I listen to anybody else. Heard mm-hmm. his, and he was just like, mm-hmm. even you could have had Altar of Sorrow be one week, the dungeon be the next as a lead in to that, and then that mm-hmm. would have filled up your little, you know, perfectly symmetrical calendar that you guys are going for if that's what mm-hmm. you wanted to fill. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, it just again, I think it even starts from the very beginning with Vex Offensive. You have a new activity that you want people to play, but you're not making it a pinnacle reward. Like, yeah. why? Why? This is what you want us to be doing. Like, again, I, I always felt that was a misstep. Again, I get the whole thing of making other things powerful and not everything's going to be a pinnacle drop. I actually like the levels and the, the separation on the map telling you what is going to be what. Yeah. But when you limit everything to non-match made activities, it really is a, a problem, especially with your new activity. You want incentive to that new activity. So I think that was a huge missed opportunity. You've already We've already said it at Nauseam how some type of reward drop the Mago Loop or whatever would also grant granted a lot of incentive. So yeah, like I was coming into this, I was like, yo, he not gonna like me this last word. You know, I didn't know how you felt. I know I felt you were kind of the same. Until I put me. my video up. Until I saw the video. I'm like, oh, okay. Cause I don't feel bad now. Cause I'm like, I'm gonna be a grouch. I'm gonna be Mr. No, Negative. That's... They not gonna like me at the campfire today. Then I saw your video. I was like, yes. <laughs> like and you're then, in you're in the middle of like some popping games coming out right now yeah it's why fire right am now. i gonna log in 
There was bro, I'm playing Outer Worlds. I'm playing um what you call it? I'm still finishing up Gears Five. I got, I'm playing three Game of the Year candidates in Jedi Fallen Order. Oh, Gears right? Five is not a Game of the Year candidate. Hey, don't they, hey, we ain't gonna do that. Uh, uh-uh, I played it all the <laughs> way through. We ain't gonna do that now. I played that. We ain't that. gonna do mm-hmm. that now. Continue. <laughs> We gonna say this one because this this will turn into the last <laughs> Gears Five. We don't want to do that, but we we just gonna respectfully disagree. But it it's a good game that I'm enjoying. I already got one on my back over here. Thank you. But you, you listen, bro. You playing solo, so we don't. You the solo guy. Two of you playing consistently with three people, and someone was Jack. It is a blast, man. It is. I'm having a. Do you play Horde? Did you play Horde? Board? You, you don't like that. But anyway, we're gonna get into that. We're gonna leave this alone. We're gonna leave because this 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 will sidetrack the campfire, and we don't want to do that right now. <laughs> what we want to do is talk about <laughs> Ben there. Gears Five was great. Tell him exactly, exactly. Tell tell the cheetah what's going on here. But y'all let I let the chat handle. But all jokes aside, like oh, now said, we're getting the last word. Final assault. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is final assault right now. You know what? I'm trying <laughs> to keep it together because this will be a three hour show. And I I really want to respect the time of the listener. <laughs> <laughs> the campfire, y'all know how I get. I don't want to do that today. We got other things to, we got other fish to fry. But anyway, like I was saying, the um, I was gonna come extremely negative, Ian, and it's not until for me, and we'll get into it, when I saw the twab that I felt, even though I'm, I'm not talking about the end of this season, but what's coming from a from a subclass from a sandbox standpoint, really excites me. So I don't know if we want to transition now. But that's about where as good I of a segue as you can go for if you're gonna mm-hmm. grumble all the way through it. But we are really <laughs> excited about this one. Yeah, <clears throat> maybe. But um, maybe. yeah, mm-hmm. so the TWAB did give us some news. Mm-hmm. Still, nothing about our activity. This mm-hmm. is all we get is in the top. I'm gonna read this, and this is mm-hmm. why we're like, maybe we're not done. Big mm-hmm. giant question mark stuck at the end of this one. Mm-hmm. We wrapped up Festival Lost this week, but cleaning up the decorations wasn't the only thing that changed in the tower. Ikora finished her construction project, closed out all the permits, and Guardians launched an attack on the Undying Mind. The attack is ongoing, and all season pass holders can join in the Vex Offensive and transmat the finished portal. Doesn't look finished, by the way. Yeah. From the tower to summon the Undying Mind to defeat the Undying Minds from different timelines. The impact of your victory has not been made clear just yet, but in time... Mm -hmm. You will learn more about how this will further evolve the world as we transition into next season. So there, da, da, da. there is more to come, but definitely whether there is still more to come, the activity itself had some missteps, and I think we can mm-hmm. agree on that one. Yes, yes. Solar winds are afoot, sir. The sun has had a big solar flare, and the solar winds are going out into the solar system. That's why I wore my solar shirt today for this occasion. The solstice. <laughs> Got my solstice. I had to bring that solar out. Community too. <laughs> Woo, there we go. There we go. Let's um, get it. Basically, they say, in the combat system, they said, like, during, each, during some of these seasons, they want to look back at subclasses. Up next, the combat system is going to tackle these solar subclasses. Big ones. Um... They said they want to revisit some older subclasses to freshen them up. This means older subclass perks, uh, paths will feel viable. They're not going to basically reinvent the subclass. It's right. still going to be like the Burning Mall. It's still going to be the Golden Gun. You're not going to have, like, the Flame Ninja or something. Like, they're not going to completely rebuild them, but they do want to tweak these subclasses as we go through. Um, so we've got three. We've got Gunslinger, mm-hmm. Way of the Sharpshooter, Bottom Path. You've got Sunbreaker, mm-hmm. Code of the Devastator, Middle Path, and then Dawnblade, Sky, Attuned of Sky, Top Path. Which one mm-hmm. would you like to start with, Sir Cognito? No, let's let's do it. Um, transition it in order. Um, start with the you know our good old hunters. There's a lot going on there. So you want to let's get let's get that cracking. Right. So they said traditionally the way of the sharpshoot has been mostly used in specific PVE activities and almost exclusively paired with Celestial Nighthawk Helm. It's the one that gives you guys the precision damage bonus and things like that. You have the three shot, gets more damage as you shoot. So for the three shot, we increase the auto aim distance and reliability mm. when aiming down sights, as mm. it fulfills the role for a longer range shot, as opposed to for the six shot, we shorten the damage fall off range. To emphasize the short-range gunfighter with the role of killing a lot of people. And that makes mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go shoot a boss halfway across the room or the map with the, mm-hmm. th- with the six shot. 
typically. Mm -hmm. The six shot is like clear, 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 clear. And as you can continually get bullets back in that gun over time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. clear a lot of ads. Right. So they're giving those two a bit more of a distinction. Uh, then we also get down to, we've made other changes to the way of the outlaw to help keep its potency, like adding a new explosive proximity knife that can stick to mm. a surface and detonate when enemies pass nearby. Woo! Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, because right now the trip, now they basically have two trip mines. Yes. I still wish you could unicorn somebody with a trip mine. <laughs> I, I would be okay with it, and I would I I would hate my head being unicorn, but it's still hilarious and it's worth it if you can land it. Uh, yes. But the explosive proximity knife sounds kind of like a trip mine. If you get in proximity, mm -hmm. it explodes. Question is, how big is the explosion? Does it right. kill you, and or is it just like, poof, like I'm gonna like bruise my shoulder with uh, while I yeah, walk by? Is it like, a scratch? Yeah. Is it is it worth it? Right. Um, That's correct. But they wanted way of the sharpshooter to feel more active and rewarding for players who can feel fulfill the role of the sharpshooter by taking down enemies with accuracy and precision. Mm -hmm. So one of those out there, we actually talked about this before. We always talk about shoulder charge and handheld supernova, and it sounds yes. like you're getting another one of those, by the way. But we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. Um, hey, don't don't start slandering. Don't you start. You know don't it you start. sounds just like don't handheld you supernova. Start, don't you even start. All right. You 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 this is about the hunters. Don't you throw the warlock slant in and try to slip it in during the hunter segment. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Continue. <laughs> uh -huh. So for, but we did actually say the hunters in fairness do not have a one shot yes. melee. Mm. That's mm. not gonna be that. That's not gonna be the way anymore. The new weighted Ooh. knife, high damage Ooh, knife throw with a long windup, travels at high speeds, bounces once, and does extra damage to the head. Precision mm. shot, final blows, recharge the melee completely. Mm. One hit precision final blows in PvP. Hunters. Shut up. <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing no more. I got to interrupt. I don't want to hear anything from Hunters anymore. This right here, well-deserved. Fire. You guys needed a one-hit because we got these Titans running around. Titans running around <laughs> that are doing their shoulder foolishness with no skill involved. At least you, you know what I like about this, Hunters? At least your one hit melee requires skill. You have to get a precision. You just gotta run mindlessly across the map and just throw your knee out and get instant one hit. You, Are you in an 80 degree friend. cone of me? You're also gonna die. That's not precision. You, you can my, kiss my friend, butt. are sub the subclass of skill. And Bungie's rewarding that skill. We're not gonna do mindless Titan smashing and stuff like that. This is what you guys need. I'm happy. I'm very happy. My Hunter brothers. <laughs> he's, out. he's out, he's out, he's out, he's out. See over there, this is the Warlocks and the Hunters. We gotta come together against the evil Titans, man. This is what we're <laughs> This is what we're talking about, right? The one hit melee potential. This is beautiful. I am very happy, I'm very proud. This is this is important, man. Shout out to the gunslingers out here. Shout out to Sinister. This is great, man. I, I love it. I lo this is a good day. They gonna have to work now. They gonna have to work. That's what I like. <laughs> Can't eat. The floor they, is they got less excuses, so that's they... <laughs> excuses. <laughs> um, but no, honestly, it's like in fairness. Like I always thought, the throwing mm -hmm. knife—if you could hit him in the head, yeah. it ought to be. If I take a it knife in be. the head, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Yes, makes perfect sense yes. to me. So mm -hmm. I honestly totally approve it. It is slower. It's going to travel mm -hmm. fast. The mm -hmm. montage of the bounce kills are going to probably ruin yeah. me when somebody does that finally, but I cannot wait to see that one. <laughs> Overall, there's enough things that kill me. Add one more to the list. Just makes it a little more fun for everybody. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is a highly skilled thing, but if you land it, man, that is going to be feeling good. Mm -hmm. And you get to throw it again. You're like, mm -hmm. uh, foom, ding, mm -hmm. gets him in the head. Yeah. All right, hold on. Got it back. <gasps> foom. It's like, it's Fine. not going to be like throwing darts. It's not going to be quick, like, pew. It's going to be like getting ready to throw like a small hatchet or a tomahawk. Like it's going to have, it's going to have a weight to that throw. So you're going to have to get ready and time it. But I'm, I'm, you would think somebody who does just this mindless shoulder charging would be, would be upset about this. But honestly, I'm totally fine. 
Yeah, I mean, because yours required no skills, so I can see why. Absolutely none at all. Zero <laughs> skill, no planning ahead. None. Absolutely. Just completely mindless, easy kills all the time. Totally. And, and yours is not subclass specific. I mean, you just. No, you can completely. Just throw take it any anywhere Titan. I want to all yes. the time. No, it doesn't it's matter. Completely, you, yeah. You throw on any I don't even need. I don't even need ability energy. I can do it at will just at my beck and call. It is there great. You go. So awesome. <laughs> You um, own that easy button. That's right. Yeah, staples. They're right in my back pocket, man. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. This is quality Let's of go. life. Lasts longer, but gives you a bit less energy per second. Precision hits grant two stacks. Mm. This is the point of me not playing a hunter in a while. It's like, what is quality of life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, QOL. <laughs> oh, practice makes perfect. Enter perfect, a trance yeah. with each precision shit. <laughs> Precision Language. shot. Hold on, we got to timestamp that one. Uh, Thirty-six minutes. Remember that, guys. Think about the children at the campfire. Excuse me, guys. Had to bleep one. I flubbed a word. It happened. Anyways, yeah, that's first ever. Practice I'm makes perfect. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Enter a trance with each precision hit, <laughs> reducing the cooldown of your super <laughs> <laughs> knife juggler kills grant super energy. So mm. a little less, but overall still a good thing. Yes, sir. I still can't get over that one. I know, that was hilarious. <laughs> I was, I was like, pursuing him. Hmm. Beep. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. There's going to be a beep in there. Be like, I thought this was a family friendly episode. I'm going to complain. I'm sorry. <laughs> I actually won't even beep it. I'll just mute myself, honestly. No, that the old man said, Where's Captain America? Language. <laughs> yeah. Language. Did he just say language? Yes, he did. Uh, knock new, him down. Uh, knock them down. Precision, final blows, increase weapon stability and ADS speed. Timer starts at 10 seconds, but any additional final blows slash assists can increase it up to 25 seconds. Mm. Casting your super with this buff above 20 seconds consumes the buff and grants extra damage. Does not mm. stack with Celestial Nighthawk. Mm. There's going to be some science done with that one. Yeah, man. Precision final blows. Increased weapon stability and ADS speed. Bro. Neutral game. Neutral yeah, and they're game saying that's crazy. a new perk. So they're actually changing yeah. a perk. That's neutral game, bro. Starts at 10 seconds for and any additional final blow can increase. So you can start. Like, think about the synergy with that, right? Mm -hmm. If you start getting into a flow. Mm -mm, so nah, the previous perk cool. was line them up. Precision hits with golden gun. Increase its damage and extend its duration. Right. You still only get three shots, so you don't really need a longer duration. The damage isn't mm -hmm. a bad thing, but mm -hmm. this is, I guess, your way to make precision shots matter. And then mm -hmm. crowd pleaser, if it's still there, enables precision damage with golden gun. Precision hits mm -hmm. generate orbs of light. So, uh, wait a minute. No, knock them down is going to take the place of the one I just oh, wow. said. Line them up is still mm -hmm. there. Old perks from Crowd Pleaser and are now part, part, of, this part perk. of this perk. Golden Gun can mm -hmm. cause precision damage and precision shots generate orbs of light. Okay. 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 They move that over there and then knock them down is in the bottom one. So they move mm -hmm. some stuff around, but honestly, it's just, it's, they're rewarding the precision gunplay. So if you're going right. to be running scouts or pulses or getting a lot of headshots from range, you're going to mm -hmm. get rewarded for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess this is one of those points where it's like, when you get rewarded for your scout rifle shots, yeah, there's a point where you can kind of make a build for this, but I still yeah. always feel most of these skill trees do mm -hmm. not really steer anybody. They're not powerful enough. They, they typically steer people completely away from the meta, at least in PvE. Mm -hmm. PvP okay. maybe somewhat, but in PvE, I never feel like the skill trees like really push me to play a specific mm -hmm. way most of the time. Okay. Okay. But that's just me. No, I see where you go. I see where you go. Well, so I don't keep yeah. talking. You can talk about the Warlock, because I know that's your no. baby. Yeah, we can get about that. I, you know, I'm definitely going to get that. Actually, I want to do it the opposite way, if I actually. Let me talk about the Titan and then ask your opinion, and oh. you talk about the Warlock, and I ask my opinion. Okay, a little we'll back like and that. forth. It's like we yeah, have a dialogue going on. It's the weirdest you know thing. Saying? Let's get it popping, man. So, yes, yeah, Sunbreaker, if you're ready. Code of the Devastator. Middle pat. Titans adhere to the Code of the Devastator. So let's get what they're talking about. So right now... 
they said, you know, they want to, you guys want to crush with your smoldering hammers, want to live your dream, but their data indicated that the subclass was underperforming in PvP, and that is the truth. We decided to make a few changes that should enable it to be more competitive. The Roaring Flame perk has received a significant buff to its bonus damage, and the buff now lasts 25% longer, making it easier to build and retain stacks between encounters. The base damage of throwing hammer melee ability has increased. It's now very lethal in PvP when you have Roaring Flames active. In addition, once you've thrown the hammer and it's lying on the ground, you don't have to get quite as close to pick it up, Finally, we tuned the super in a number of ways. For starters, Burning Maul now lasts longer, giving you more time to use it strategically instead of simply spla spamming the slam button. Titans only want to do a smash. Yep. <laughs> All right. That's all we want to do. Mindlessly smash. Mindless smash. We also increased the height of the heavy slam explosion, so the super should feel much more potent against airborne enemies. Mm. That's nice. nice. That's good. You That's floofers the up there got to get you out of the air. Yeah, and the hunters that was jumping over you guys. Oh, yeah. That's... That's a big one. So, throw, see, I can sympathize with the Titan. I can sympathize. <laughs> Throwing hammer increased impact damage from 100 to 120 and increased hammer pickup radius from 2 meters to 3.5 meters. Adjusted hammer throw animations to fit a more damaging attack. And then Roaring Flames increased damage bonus from 10% per stack to 25% per stack in PvP and increased duration from 15 seconds to 20 seconds. And Burning Maul, that's the actual Super Sub, increased duration from 21.2 seconds to 28.5. Those are so oh. specific on numbers. That is crazy. How long, is that, so how long does that Super last? Like 20 seconds? No, how long does that Super last? 21.27392 seconds. It's like, <laughs> oh my God. Like, I always wonder how they settle on these numbers. Yeah, yeah it is interesting why they settled would, on 21.2. I would love to know why it's 21.2 and then now it's 28.5. Why is it not 28.6? Why is it not twenty eight point four? Like yeah. that is so specific. Blows my mind. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, no, nah, this is this is interesting, man. Twenty eight seconds. Whew. Light attack. Reduce light attack energy cost from five percent to three percent. Adjusted the animation so that it flows seamlessly into chain light attack whilst without stopping. Yo. Yo. Heavy attack. Ground slam attack now detonates when it detects enemies above it. Detonation radius was increased to make landing attacks more consistent. Increased energy cost from 6% to 8%. Whoa. Burning Maul, E. How are you feeling? I haven't used this that much because it's never been like... I still love the range of throwing the hammers, having them explode. Mm -hmm. And also, you've got the usually melting point to weaken bosses. Mm -hmm. And then in PvP... Unless you just have, like, a nice path for this thing to travel down, it's really hard to catch people with the slam. And then, like, mm -hmm. I'm like, I have a big sledge. It's like trying to go run after somebody with a sledgehammer. It's big. Yes. It's awkward. It's slow. Yep. It's not really. It's kind of gangly. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not my little, like, gotcha. Like, it's yep. not the same. So all these challenges sound positive. I don't know if they're going to be enough to pull people away like me from my throwing hammers that I can chunk mm -hmm. halfway across a map and nail somebody on point B that's fun. But mm -hmm. if, you know, if I can get on level ground and actually go have mm -hmm. that path go up there and it's going to get everybody in the realm, mm -hmm. maybe. I mean, it's definitely going to be one to try. The throwing hammer could be mm -hmm. fun. Roaring mm -hmm. Flames damage bonus seems actually pretty nice as well. So mm -hmm. there's definitely some potential here. What about PvE? This sounded kind of PvE. -y. Think about the, like Vagabondo said, like the uh, the mob clearing. Like, oh, guys, yeah. No, that crazy. With yeah, this. the mob clearing, throwing the hammer, picking it up quicker, getting it back mm -hmm. out there faster, having Roaring Flames go. Like, I know people have some fun builds with the throwing hammer alone, just like tink, okay, mm -hmm. tink, and now start mm -hmm. one hitting people as they keep getting it going, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Uh, and a super that lasts 30 seconds as you use it, obviously. Ooh. If you sat there, it would take 30 seconds to go away. Wow. But, I wow. mean, still, just cheaper light attacks if you're going for enemies mm -hmm. and then smash a couple times. Honestly, mm -hmm. it sounds like it sounds like it's getting a little bit of much-needed love in some places. Absolutely. Shout like, out to uh, Forte with the sub today. Gaming Forte, our boy. Did you what? catch that? Yes, sir. Sub hype. Right now. Yeah. Gaming Forte with the sub. Said Fred, by the way, 23 minutes ago. I think I missed that one also for 12 mm -hmm. months, sir. Thank you for the year. Welcome to the fam, of course. But Gaming Forte for the tier one sub for six months, sir. That's my, that's my bro. That's what's up, man. Salute to Forte. Um, mm -hmm. 
but yeah, overall, I mean, I think I'll just have to get it in my hands and test it. It's still mm-hmm. one of those when it comes to risk versus reward. And that's usually mm-hmm. the big thing for me is throwing hammers, not the melee one in this class I'm talking yeah. about. Mm-hmm. The other ones is like if I do a melee that hits hard enough like melting point, that shoulder mm-hmm. charge melee in PvE is mm-hmm. really strong. So then if I do that and weaken them and then can turn around and then maybe pop my super and do that much more, that's still a mm-hmm. powerful, powerful combination. So yes, I'm going to have to see how this pairs up and mm-hmm. see how it goes. Um, the range above is actually going to be a nice thing because if they're airborne or floating enemies or something that's mm-hmm. like a little farther from the radius that it doesn't catch it, that it actually potentially should give it a little more um, a little more aim assist, mm-hmm. a little more love and the freedom of uh, killing people with a big slam on the ground. So mm-hmm. hopefully that slam hits even harder now and we will see how it goes. But I mean, I don't see anything wrong with this. I just don't know if right. it's enough until I get my hands mm-hmm. on it. Okay. So right now, not, not sexy enough to pull you away just yet. I just, just love my throwing. I just love my throwing hammers. I gotta try it, but I love my throwing hammers. That's just mm-hmm. I've loved that since it, they came in Taken King, so mm-hmm. I've been kind of biased. Sinister, will you stop? Titans get the love of Sinister. This man is just je- listen. I don't like Titans like much either, but Jesus, <laughs> they needed this one, Sinister. Like no one's using Burning Maul. Like Burning Maul was cute that first week, Forsaken. <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody was like, yeah, we're going back to throwing hammers and everything else. They 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 needed that one, bro. Come on. Let's be nice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's like, I ain't get everything. Listen, your hunter, that gunslinger is fire right now. Like, uh, we ain't even going to do that. But continue. Uh, but, yeah, to give it back to you, we've got the Dawnblade Attunement of Floof. I mean, Sky. Yeah, you are the Karate Kid Ninja. Mm-hmm. So Mm -hmm. they said, with Attunement of Sky, they wanted to push air air superiority gameplay further. When we initially Mm -hmm. released this path, its movement capabilities were tuned around the original Destiny 2 gameplay experience, which was much slower with more deliberate positioning. Things have changed, obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh, So basically what they want to do is they've reduced the speed at which Burst Glide accelerates players in Daybreak. So you can't Mm. literally skate around the map, thank God. Mm. Killing by, being killed by that, it lasts a long time. And then mm-hmm. if, like, yes, those wonderful, typically, like, skaters can go through, um, mm-hmm. it's even faster. <laughs> so mm-hmm. when they get to the other side and they kill you again, it's just like... <sighs> <laughs> and I know Titans had the same thing going on, but yes. that one I know has been curtailed. This one, like, mm-hmm. the flying mm-hmm. dude... So when I watch a video, I'm like, you're so fast. Yeah, like, they can is. really cover some ground. It's impressive. So mm-hmm. a little, little slower there, which is probably okay. Mm-hmm. Um, we know this is a controversial change, but we wanted to reserve the air superiority gameplay with the Tomb of the Sky and Burst Glide Speed was blurring the lines between both Daybreak paths. Mm-hmm. Icarus dashes while in Daybreak have increased speed and thrust to recapture the Burst Glide gameplay for those running air superiority path, so bouncing it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, we hope that this we hope that while this change is different, you still feel as fast as before. But with maybe a bit more expression behind that speed, the rest of the changes are below. New Mm -hmm. Celestial Fire Melee. Send a spiral of three explosive solar projectiles. This is literally... Yeah. (laughs) Can somebody, like, frame cap that, by the way? Please. That is kind of terrifying. Um, this is solar handheld supernova all over again. That's what it sounds like. Stop. We don't know. If I gotta one hold to on. Kill. I'm talking, sir. I'm going through all the points, <laughs> and then I'll give it back to you. My opinions first. Gotta deal with, gotta deal with this slander. Continue. Heat rises. Consume mm. your grenade to extend glide time and dramatically reduce in-air accuracy pinnacle penalties for weapons. Woo. For the skilled players, I can see this being potential, but you're also giving up a grenade, so I'll be curious your opinions there. Winged Sun rework fire weapons use celestial fire. What? Fire weapons? Oh, use oh, celestial fire, fire and you? throw yeah. grenade while gliding. Oh, you can do everything while gliding now. Yes. Airborne final blows grant melee mm-hmm. energy and extend the duration of heat rises. You'll be floating mm-hmm. for, at, for days, sir, for days. Mm-hmm. Icarus Dash, tap crouch twice to dodge in mid air. Ooh, that's my baby. Dodging me. in Daybreak. And you just basically took a Titan Exotic. Why did we get ripped off? What the hell? <laughs> yeah, we, but we had it already. We, we've had this ability already. Yeah, but 
we we had the, the animation. We have no, no, you guys got enough. You let us. This is our time. Continue. Dodging in daybreak <laughs> accelerates players farther and costs less super energy while under the effects of heat rises. Note: due to mm. the nature of these reworks, Winged Sun. Wings of Sacred Dawn received a buff where it gains 15% damage resistance while Tome of Dawn is active. <laughs> All right, Mr. Warlock Man. Tell us what you think. Let's see. Yo, Warlock's very Floof gang. Floof gang. Yo, let me tell y'all something, man. This was the subclass that when I first, first played D2. The potential was so amazing. I remember throwing on that wing, Wings of Sacred Dawn. Shout out to the Wings of Sacred Dawn. Such a beautiful exotic. And um, I was just like, man, it, it's so cool. But it was just so weak because you were in the air. You were a target. And now, with all of these changes, first of all, shout out to the melee. First, the fact that they added a new melee animation. So this is pretty much the essential of, um, what's the one from the uh, Warlock that shoots the, the Dragon Ball Z um, lightning chaos, bolt. Chaos reach. Right. So yeah. So pretty much, it's chaos reach that that class is melee when you throw something at it. Right. I doubt it's gonna be a one hit kill, but it's just a a, a long a projectile melee, which is cool because it's gonna it gives you something sexy. You know what I'm saying? It gives you something sexy to use while you're in this class that's underused. This class had a lot of potential. One of the things that I like with the heat rise, they've already had it, but what's cool, it encouraged you to stay in the air, you'd shoot guns, and then from there, as long as you got kills, it would help recharge your abilities. So now they're saying, yo, charge up this grenade. That's gonna initiate heat rises. You get in the heat rises, they want you to get in the air. So this is encouraging getting the air, and what's cool is they reworked the, um, the exotic, the uh, Wings of Sacred Dawn, with the damage resistance, because that was my main thing. There was no reason to be doing all this aerial stuff, because people were like, yo, get out the air. You know what I'm saying? That's number one. And then number two, the main beef was when you were in the air, because of the way D2 was structured, you wouldn't get the um, the the in-air accuracy. They had all these nerfs to in-air accuracy when you're shooting weapons and all this stuff. So being that heat rises now reduces that penalty, we gonna have an air game, bro. And and that Icarus, that that's like um what's that joint that, that exotic y'all used to have? What was it called? Twilight? What was it? Uh what's the Titan Exotic. I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Crap. What type chat chat, y'all know what it is. Somebody's yeah, what's gonna the, be faster than I am. Someone's gonna be faster than us. We I forget the name off top. Twilight that, Garrison? Twilight Garrison. Something Garrison, yeah. That is so useful. You know what I'm saying? Being in the air, moving around, having that ability so that it, what was cool is so even if you hover, if someone got the drop on you, boom, Icarus dash, forward, back. All this is cool. Then they're giving you speed with it. This is going to change the game for Warlocks. Top tree is going to be finally something sexy. Daybreak, bottom tree was just too dominant. The fact that you had the super, you, you made it last all that long. And let's be real, I like the fact that they actually nerfed the movement going around with that class as well. They need well, yeah, to you can like you can be mobile in the air, but you yeah. shouldn't be able to get across the map in three seconds. That seems yeah. seems reasonable. Shout out to Wishful Thing. He said grounded will will fright. Listen, man, <laughs> we gotta see. We gotta see. At the end of the day, I just love the thought process of the class, which is getting in the air, being airborne, using this grenade. This is gonna. It's gonna create a whole new play style i'm actually curious in pve how effective it is but uh, i can't wait man i'm dusting off my, my wings of sacred dawn i can't wait man this, this is this is really exciting this gang is gonna of, be out there thick oh bro I, like this is one of my favorite subclasses that i knew had potential just wasn't executed no. and thankfully so thankfully bungie went back to it so this is so it's a good day, man. I'm, yeah. I'm excited. Like, literally got to be hyped. Solar needed some love, so... Yeah, man. I mean, all in all, hopefully we've got a couple... Definitely feel... I mean, you've got a single-shot melee for a hunter. You've got Burning mm -hmm. Maul that potentially has more potential explosion range mm -hmm. usability. And then you've got a Tomb of Sky where you guys are going to be flying around and living up there forever. Ever. But, as they did say, if Grounded is in session, you guys better take that subclass right off. You will die. <laughs> Listen, we don't know yet, man. Y'all don't know what the Flu no, Gang no. is about to do right Grounded, now, will, the modifier in PvE will just kill you. 
Don't do it. It's not a good idea. What if I got my 15% by my sacred dog? 15% doesn't cancel out like 50. Do the math. Come on. I know. I know. But listen, that butterfly ain't going to be there all the time. <laughs> no, it's not there. No. I'm just saying if that thing comes up, just put this yeah. away. You can use it any other time you want. Just mm-hmm. if that thing's yeah. on, don't go floofing around and dying every yeah, other time. I look up way. in the air and you're like, ghost is way. I can't even reach you. <laughs> Stay up there. You gotta I'll, go leave you. My, I'll leave you. <laughs> gotta get my ghost up there. Gotta get it. Yeah. That's what's up. But yeah, man, good stuff. Good stuff. Good good sub subclass. I love that they're giving all these old underperforming subclasses some love. Hunters, one hit melee, sorely needed. Burning Maul, sorely needed a rework. And of course, you already know that top of two men of the sky. Get my now, all I would say is all this solar love, all this you know, all this dawn talk, all this it's feeling very what, Osirisy. What, what could very that Osiris. mean, sir? It's feeling very Osirisy. That's that's all I'm saying. Man. Do you think Mercury, the planet closest to the sun, has any relation to these solar subclass abilities in your guy Osiris? What? Uh, yeah, it's not a dot. It's just seeming to come together here. Man. I don't know. We shall see. <laughs> and that's kind of the big question. It's like now we definitely have like we heard season of dawn. Everybody's like, okay, we mm-hmm. didn't have solar in the artifact at all at all and now we're seeing the kind of confirmation solar is going to be a thing in this season it's definitely going to be a factor so Mm -hmm. yeah we don't know much else about next season besides the fact that we now know solar will be involved and the the dawn of a new era hopefully a good one talk about it forte you already know you can say it like listen I would just say this just seems like a perfect setup for a certain NPC, a certain game mode that revolves around Mercury and the sun. Get your toasters it, ready. That's that. I'm, I'm with you, Vagabondo. Listen, man. It, 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 the stars may be telling us something. They may be aligning for something magical. But hey, I'm if, you, if you flew, I'm going to toast your butt. That's just what's going to happen. <laughs> Bro, if they bring trials with Osa, yo. I'm going to go crazy, you know it. I don't know if crazy, enough people but... have been playing Elimination because there's not really incentive mm-hmm. to go do it. So really yeah. have given them, like, feedback. Mm-hmm. Maybe they have, you know, really big PvP community people out there at a summit or something like that. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But right now it seems like Trials is mm-hmm. doesn't feel like it's coming. If it does, mm-hmm. it just feels like it's going to be a huge surprise. So Yeah. I mean, we'll we still could be a little bit ways off, but like I said, we, we shall see. Yeah. Uh, quick touch on the news. We do have Iron Banner next week. So during your Thanksgiving holidays over the weekend, traveling, stuff like that, get some PvP in if you can, get some pinnacle drops if you can, but Iron Banner will be next week. The usual Iron Banner control. At some point, do you want something besides control for Iron Banner? Um, I think no, <laughs> but I really? think that we've only because I just think we've had Iron Banner too much this season. Well, that's, you know, yeah. I, I, it feel like it didn't. It feel like we just had Iron Banner. I swear we're getting it every three weeks, like or every two almost. But yeah, it was a lot. Like two weeks, yeah. So I think like this is the new Pinnacle Source thing, and I think that's what it is. I think if we miss it and we had a little activity between it, I wouldn't be as mad. But I don't know. I mean, when we tried Iron Banner, the other things, then people complain. Oh, it's not control. I don't like it. So I would rather them just leave it and then shut add up and deal other activity. Yeah. yeah, just shut up and do it and add other activities and space it out so we miss it a little bit. That was just me. Uh, Supremacy, they need, they I did like wishful like, thinking, though. I did like of fire, this just popped in my head. I was like, instead of control, you could do like Iron Band, or like you could do Solar cl- solar Clash. And it's like oh. in old school NBA Jam TE. And if you get three kills in a row, Ooh. he's heating up. He's heating up. <laughs> he's on fire. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, just, you fire. walk around and everything you do is just like crazy solar damage i don't know mm-hmm. see the the goofy stuff like that i don't know if they'll ever go quite that far but it would be really fun if they did yo black wing said riff now bungie forte says no riff please <laughs> and then I, rift. Forgot I, about want, rift. I would like to see rift though yo, i haven't played rift so long i forgot what the mode was that's how long it's been for me what was rift what we had to do in that what I was forgot. Rift? Yo, I can't Pick up the remember. orb, row and dunk it on the other person's side. The other right, team's side. Right, 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 right. Damn, it's been so it's long. It's been so bro. long, you forgot? I forgot how Rift played. Forgot the Rift That's ball dunkage, you know, the turnover, yeah. back slam, double twister, 180 spin. Gotta have some style on those dunks. Gotta get some bonus mm-hmm. points. That and some SRL, damn it. What's up with that? 
I'm not holding my breath on that one. Yeah, I know. Jesus. What's the and guy? I had fun in that, and that was actually pretty good, I too. I loved SRL, man. That was my joke. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Iron Banner next week. So enjoy. Get some pinnacles if you can. Hopefully we know what the hell mm-hmm. our level grind is going to look like next season sometime soon. But we don't know yet. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they do. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Uh, shout out to everybody out there. The iPads for Kids program. Uh, the Bungie Foundation. All of you guys through at least even my link. I know we passed $2,000. Everyone combined. Nice. There were 40 plus thousand donors, 5,500 wow. streamers who supported the campaign. And one6 million was gathered for that one so that wow. is amazing guys so the game Sick. to give will be going 1.6 million into mm-hmm. the children's miracle network hospitals for the ipads for kids which is just awesome shout out to all you guys small plus i don't want to clap too loud mm-hmm. small salute. plus salute salute mm-hmm. yeah you guys Very are cool. totally awesome um do you want to cook, sir? Do you want to learn how to cook <laughs> Destiny style? We've got the new official Destiny cookbook in collaboration is, with Insight editors and author Victoria Rosenthal. Destiny's first official cookbook is filled with recipes inspired by the characters and locations seen throughout its expansive universe. Did you have something to do with Disney? I, I don't. You're I, chef in here. I have no say in this, sir. <laughs> uh, page seventy-three in the index now. <laughs> is the cake? I well, wish the cheesecake. Will the cheesecake recipe be in here, sir? I wish I had any part in this. Trust me. <laughs> part of me also wants to go through the Destiny cookbook. I saw the um, uh, XOXO mm-hmm. Carly when she does the where's her, her and um, she was saying it's like I'm going to do a full, full cook through of the whole cookbook on stream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How nice. Cookbook cook through. Uh, is uh? this your uh, solo nightfall guide? And the next video is your solo uh, Hush Puppies fried chicken guide. Like that, Yo, that would be fire though. <laughs> If you did a video like that, I go for it. I'd watch that show. <laughs> Black Wings. I can't wait for Abantas doing a cooking Destiny stream in that. There we go. Yes, sir. A crunchy Vex cookie. Cake from the moon. Yeah. And then crunchy somewhere Vex like with page, that Vex milk. Yeah. Page 60, 68 is going to be. And a box of raisins for you. For the box of raisins. For Maris. You already know. Salute. Vex. I'm going to have to find a way to acquire some Vex milk, though, because that will probably be used in some recipes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we also have Grimoire Anthology 3. The Grimoire books are awesome, so they're coming with this mm-hmm. one. Um, it's really weird they announced some of this stuff so far in advance. It's coming in late 2020. That is yes. like a year away. Yes. That is so long. I'm in no rush That's to pre-order long. that one because I feel like if I do order these books, I by the time they actually come, become available, I'm like, did I order Did that? I even? Yep. I don't even yeah. know. So. Mm-hmm. Those are coming. Um Kind of wanted to take a little brief moment, uh, break mm-hmm. off of the standard discussion. We had this mm-hmm. thing called Stadia Launch. Yes. Yes. Do you have, do you have any gonna... opinions about that, Sir X Cloud? Yes. Let's talk about it. Shout out to Paul Tassie with his uh, amazing um, Stadia experiences. And a uh, shout out to Destin Legary. He also was doing some testing. And um, yeah, man, it was, it was very uh, polarizing. Let's just say that. Um, a lot of people were talking about, um, first of all, shout out to Digital Foundry. We, we got the technical specs of it. It is running 60 frames. Um, it's a 4K upscale. So it's not, it's technically 1080p on an on a, on a upscale. So it's not the true 4K that was promised. But, um, you know, for the most part, you know, people have been having issues. And, um, yeah, shout what? out to uh, Paul, Paul Tassi. He's been, he, his, his experience, I've been charting it, has been really rough now we don't you know i think he's based in either ohio or chicago one of those cities midwest and um i don't know if it's a data center issue but he's been working with support with because uh, i saw some video the frame drops and it was just awful awful like yeah i, mean, I was just like I, it was like not play this was it mortal kombat 11 cutscene that was like eh, 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 and like even <laughs> voice was out of sync it was yeah that was bad. then what was scary was he was talking about player population trying to do strikes him the only person in it you know, that's, again, the disadvantage of not being linked with the PC and the Steam community and them being in its own ecosystem. Who, How many people really have, you know, Destiny on Stadia? You know what I mean? So you got that aspect. Then you got the, collect- the collecting ships aspect, which I don't mind. I mean, they needed to have the whole thing. They're a new platform. I didn't mind that as something exclusive to them. But um, oh, <laughs> 30, yo, Neil Mitchell said 13 players in Gambit. Wow. Is that true? Wow, that's crazy. No, I literally saw it was 13 players in Gambit. Stop. And then even Crucible was, oh, where's that image? Hold on. You keep talking. I'm going to look because that yeah. is too good. 
it, it's it's been real spooky, man. So uh, yeah, it's just like you know, um, again, optimal com conditions. You know, this is uh, shout out to Digital Family. They had like two hundred up, two hundred down. You know, and he was he was rocking. They were rocking out. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, how many people have that kind of a setup? And again, that's ideal setup with nothing else on your network and all that other stuff. You know, it, it is, it, I, I, again, I haven't played um, Stadia yet. I've just played xCloud. And, you know, at the end of the day, I've played Destiny on xCloud. And I've had a great experience. You know what I'm saying? Now, was there some lag? Yes, there was, it was minimal on some level. I felt more with jumping. But uh, Stadia's got his work cut out. They've they've got a lot to do, you know, and um to convince people to try to go to this platform. And I don't know, man. I don't know, you know. But um, definitely some spooky issues and um, just some really bad hiccups and stuff that I saw. So, work in progress. What what was your thought process on all the the Stadia stuff that you saw? You're muted, sir. <laughs> there was a point where I thought about getting it just because yes. I was like, hey, if I travel, it might be cool. Just take the puck in a controller. Mm -hmm. So glad I didn't. <laughs> I mean, from what no I'm founders seeing. Founders Edition for you, no, sir? Just from what I'm seeing, it's just not there. Mm. Whether it's mm. population, as you said, because it is on its own, still having to buy the games. The all I, I mean, I've listened to enough gaming Bruh. podcasts. The pricing model is one of the big, oh. big issues. Like to enjoy high res, you gotta pay the fee. Then you gotta mm -hmm. buy the games. Now I know some of them, like the day of, I think got discounted because a lot of these were older games that it launched with, mm -hmm. and like they were originally priced at like, I don't know, full price. You're talking 50, full 60 price. bucks for games. And then if you had the pro version, then you could get some like 50% off discounts and stuff. But these are still old mm -hmm. games. We're talking about like Tomb Raiders. I'm like on Steam, this thing's like 20 bucks, maybe. Bro. Like, why am I gonna pay? And there are some games where maybe it's not as bad, mm -hmm. but there's plenty of games. Like, I could see an adventure game probably not being too bad. Anything right. where it's precise. Mortal Kombat, Dark Souls, mm -hmm. like those things where you need the precision, the frames. You do not want any, like, input lag. You have an right. issue. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I think for me, just the piece with Stadia is the fact that the population's not there for Destiny. It's not there. Not for and Destiny. that's the free game. Well, oh. And it's not even really free because you really got to pay that one twenty. One thirty. Get well, you're getting, the, you're getting the Chromecast Ultra and the controller and the three mm -hmm. free months, and you're getting some stuff with it. But mm -hmm. and half the game's free anyway, so you could just honestly log in as it is. Mm -hmm. And get um, this: you heard you heard what they told Tassie when he was having the issues. Oh, they were like the the, the turn fix it down. Is turn down your fidelity that you paid for. Remember, you paid one thirty to have four K. 60 frames per second, that's what the premium tier is. For them to tell you to fix it, to bring it down to 1080p, then it's like, well, what am I even paying for this for? It's like, it, it's just a, it's a glorified beta. And then on top of the last thing, I know you're not the biggest Microsoft guy, but Project X Cloud literally took their lunch that last week. Oh, no, it absolutely like, just knocked their socks they, off. They, they literally dropped 50 games in their, their beta of Project X Cloud not only performs better, not only has more functionality, but you've got Game Pass games, and not only do you have what's in the X Cloud, which is amazing, you can remote into your console and play Destiny, whatever game you owned on your Xbox. So it's just like, yeah, you know, right now, just to have those games, them old games they got at that price, to me, it's a glorified beta, and you gotta worry with a Google. The problem with Google is that if things don't go right, they have been known, you know what I'm saying, to leave the platform, to to run away, you know, hangouts on air. I mean, we can the list goes on with platforms that if it doesn't start on fire out the gate, Google will abandon. So, so we got to see. It, right now, it's a glorified beta as far as I'm concerned, and, you know, hopefully it improves. But, you know, hopefully Bungie got a nice check. That's all I – hopefully Bungie got a nice check, Seriously. you know what I'm saying, for, well, for I mean, putting it out even, there, man. What I'm saying is, like, they're, them being, like, the forefront on this thing is – I don't want to say it's bad for them, but it's not helping. Right. I think, <laughs> it's just I think it's a weird platform overall. It's a weird platform. This is what I think is going on. My get my guess is they definitely threw them a bag. They definitely dropped the you know a little back the money truck up for them. But I think as an independent studio, Dude. Bungie's looking at it like, yep, Dude. 
Google, oh yeah, yeah the, the, the Brinks truck came back, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was Google, Google dropped some money off for that, for that level of um, exclusivity. But again, I don't even know if it's exclusive. We got to see. The key, I think, for Bungie is to say, hey, look, you want us, we're an independent studio. Let's maximize and get ourselves on all Yeah, it's platform. visibility for them. Let them fight it out because no one knew who was going to win the streaming wars. You still got Amazon coming up. You know, xCloud is still in beta. Put it on everything and just cash in, baby. Cash in. So I ain't mad at that. But they need to get on xCloud in the xCloud because I'm telling you right now, it, bro, bro, I'm playing Gears 5 on xCloud. On my on my phone on cellular network 4G LTE, bro, no noticeable lag in party chat, insane. And I was playing my boys Kai was on PC and my other boy was on um I, I what you call it, was on Attic was on Xbox. It's crazy. What, what X Cloud is doing is, is performance wise, game wise, they're smashing them. So I don't know what they're gonna do, but that's just me. Yeah, so yeah, Stadia launched mm -hmm. questionably. If your population issues are out there, there's shipping mm -hmm. issues. People are wanting refunds because they're not going to get them for like a month. And then mm -hmm. game launch list changes like the day before. And then they add, it was 12 games the two days before, 22 games one day before. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those things that's like, I know, like, I hope it doesn't do anything bad to Bungie. I mean, the visibility is never bad. Mm -hmm. and it's And this is honestly for Bungie, it makes sense because Tassie had a great thing. It was just like, but Destiny is cross save. I can go log in, play with my characters, even if it's not the best. Still, yeah. my guys, I'm not right. gonna go buy Borderlands three again, start <laughs> over characters, grind stuff. No, like all those oh, like my progress on Tomb Raider. I made it halfway Good through. Point. Well, maybe I want to play this thing on the go if I got some time on the train Good now. Good point. Good point. No, very few games have cross save. Good point. They don't even have an achievement system up right now. All the features that they promised with the YouTube inter integration, they're not even ready. Shout out to Black Ones. He said Google knew Amazon was doing the streaming service, wanted to get theirs out first. And in doing so, they released an unfinished product, so they were shut down by some... <laughs> Look, I don't know if they're going to shut down, but I do think oh, there is then, some yeah, truth. Amazon coming too? Really? Yeah. There is some truth. Because I'm like, why did they launch? Why did they? It felt like they were in a rush to launch. And, and that could be it. They could be saying to themselves, we got to get to market and then we'll just improve it. But again, if it's not quality, you know, who, the, the question comes down to E, who is this for? Who is the market? I still can't who's, figure it out. Who's going to pay? Outside of us crazy Destiny fans. Who have cross save, you know? But now that you, there's no population. Destiny is the ultimate friend game, right? Like, there's no population. It's like, ugh, we gotta see, we gotta see, man. But it's, not, it's looking a little spooky for them. Yeah, a little weird. Mm. So, uh, but yeah, there's a couple other random issues. Uh, people mm -hmm. have been killing that dungeon boss in crazy fashion. Uh, yes. They said next week is going to be a short week, so I wouldn't expect too much in the TWAB. Um, mm -hmm. I know I'll be working some of those yeah. days. I don't know if you'll be busy and stuff, but I would not bet on a last word next week. I can yeah. imagine it's just going to be ultra right, light. Bro. And then I do want to talk about Anthem when you get. Oh, chance. I'm not. No, we're not done. I'm just kind of oh, wrapping no, no, up no, just no, the no, twab. No, no. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But I did want to shout out Destiny getting a couple Let's nominations oh, in those. the Game Awards. Oh, Indeed. those! Oh, the Game Awards. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's get it. Trying to actually get to the Game Awards. Mm -hmm. But we've yeah. got... Destiny got nominated in two categories. So I wanted to mm -hmm. shout them out. They did get nomination for um, Best Ongoing Game. Mm -hmm. They're going up against Apex Legends, Final Fantasy XIV, Fortnite, Rainbow Six Siege. So you got Oof. some... Some heavy hitters in there, too, for definitely people. Mm -hmm. I mean, Apex, I probably wouldn't put that high. Fortnite, with his black hole thing, may win just because of the publicity yeah. stunt. Mm -hmm. Final Fantasy fourteen. I've heard awesome things about what, Shadow Reborn or something. Like, whatever the newest thing is, mm -hmm. Final Fantasy has made an amazing comeback. People love that game, and that's something mm -hmm. they actually pay a subscription for. And then Siege just continues to do its thing. So, mm -hmm. And then Best Community actually, supports the other one is Apex, Destiny, Final Fantasy, Fortnite. Same thing. Same ones. Like yeah. ongoing community support of the same categories. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it looks like there were two uh, sound categories. One was audio design. Mm -hmm. Didn't see Destiny there. And then one was score and music. And uh, yeah. Didn't see Destiny there. So uh, once again, <laughs> once again, Destiny 
is not recognized for any musical achievements. So, you know I got to talk about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, this is a disgrace. This is a disgrace. I- I'm sorry, y'all. Like, we got to hold their feet to the fire. And, at the- again, I understand Destiny may have a negative connotation with hardcore gamers. You know, they may have issues with the game itself and not liking the loop. But this has nothing to do with it. This is musical achievement. When you listen, sorry about the tapping, I'm mad. When you listen (laughs) to Destiny, just the title screen, just floating in space. Some cool themes. Like, I I don't even need to get into the specifics. Y'all already know what time it is with this. And it's not even about being biased because I'm a Destiny fan. Good music is good music. This game has had it for the longest. I mean, let's be real. It didn't even get nominated. Think about this. It didn't even get nominated when Marty O'Donnell was here. When we had the, what was the joint? With the Spheres? What's the joint with the Bro, that's some of the most beautiful orchestra music you've ever heard. Not even a nomination. That's my problem. Forget about winning. The game's not even getting nominated. We got to hold them to the fire, y'all. We got, I'm telling you, man, we got to band up. We got to keep calling them out. Because this is a travesty, man. Maybe we, you know what we got to do? I'm a, I figured out the solution. You got to do the Death Stranding, yo. We got to call Deej up and make sure Deej get an appearance. Get, get Jeff Keighley and them guys to make an appearance in the game. <laughs> we got to get them in, in Destiny Can and make them, them an NPC in Destiny. And that's how Destiny's going to get nominated. Shout out to Death Stranding. <laughs> Shout out to Kajim. That's, that's the only not, way. No. Because if you, if you put Jeff in the game, you got a shot. <laughs> No, it's not too soon, Neo. I'm in my feelings, Neo Mento. I'm in my feelings. We got to, we got to do it. We got to pay some people off. We got to grease some palms. We got to do something. To, look at me, fuck this. Man. We got to do, it, it, it's, it's desperate times, y'all. We got to do something, man. This is the only way. Y'all know what to do, Destiny community. <laughs> but y'all know this, all jokes aside, y'all know this is a travesty, man. It's a travesty. There's no reason for this, man. Mm-mm-mm. Well, mm-mm-mm. On a positive note, which is what I was trying to get to, I did want to shout them out just because they got nominated. Now, they are in like the ongoing community support section, so they seem to be like existing games that have been out for a while. So maybe mm-hmm. when it comes to nominations, they're going more for new releases. Mm-hmm. Just a guess. Because, yeah. I mean, that could be part of it. We're talking about all new games in most of these categories, and then we've got the mm-hmm. ongoing, and that's where Destiny is at. It's an ongoing right. game. Best ongoing music game. Like, I mean, you're going to get a little specific with some awards, but, I mean, shout out to the music and the sound design team. Of course, they always do an amazing job, and I just kind of wish they could get a chance for the recognition. This is, again, Mm -hmm. where Destiny 3, that is where that benefit of Destiny 3, they can get them back on those award lists for everything. Game of the year, come out, crush it. Space Doritos coming in. Music is flying hot. Hold on. Shout out to Blackwing, my guy. I know what you're talking about. He said, it's a piece of music when it plays when we're over, and it starts with a few simple notes on the piano, and it's so damn beautiful, it almost brings tears to my eyes. It's a shame they didn't get it. Bro, there's that joint from Shadow Keep. You ever sit in orbit, and it's like, and then it does that little, little, bro, that, that little beat right there is fire. Like, it's so many little moments well, I mean, like one that. One of the epic thing. songs is like the, the Halo menu screen. Oh. And then, like, oh. every menu, every year we get a new, like, orchestrated menu screen in Destiny, and they're awesome. So, game Gaming Forte, that? I'm not trying to give them a pass. I just don't know how the nominations work. Yeah. As this is an ongoing thing, they're going like, hey, what are the games of the year? Well, Destiny's been no, a game no, for, like, six right. years. Could, and that's, it, why, think... that's more what I'm saying. Like, no, I'm not giving the pass, because honestly, like, you listen to, like, this is Destiny 2 Shadowkeep soundtrack. Put that against mm-hmm. another soundtrack. It's right there with everybody else. I don't you know care. what I think like, what's happening? I think you nailed it. I think part of the reason is that they're considering Destiny the still the 2017 game, right? When, when did Destiny 2 launch? 2017? Yep. Right. So they're still acting like it's a 2017 game that doesn't count on a yearly award thing. And they're, they're disrespecting the expansions, they're not acting like an expansion is the new game. So yeah. when we're getting a Shadow Keep and we're getting all these expansions each separate year, they're not counting that. That's like, oh, that's old Destiny. You see what I'm saying? And I think that's what. So yeah, the only shot we have is these old, you know. But the only thing is, bro, where are uh, multiplayer? Okay, maybe they don't give us that. But okay, but at the end of the day, like 
the only shot we have now is these ongoing game kind of categories, that kind of thing. And the, the only hope now is Destiny 3, right? Whenever a Destiny 3 is announced, at that point, it's considered a new game. So I really don't want to hear it anymore. But, you know, yeah. we shall well, see. Well, cross our fingers when and if Destiny 3 does get a launch, mm-hmm. it better be on some of these lists. Yeah. Facts. Just saying. That's, mm-hmm. That'll be your test to see who's doing the voting up there and how that's working. Listen, man. Just get Jeff to talk to, to Deej. Put them both in the game. Guaranteed game of the year nomination, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> Shout out to Death Stranding. <laughs> hey, what else we got, man? Oh, we got this anthem thing, man. Yeah, you want to talk about that? What's up? Let me let's get to it, bro. You know, listen, man. I've Anthem Gang, y'all know I've been very hard on y'all. I've been very hard on y'all. You know, I love the premise. I always felt the idea was cool. I was one of the very early supporters of the game. Um, Iron Man the game, we affectionately called it. Yep. And it, it started off very strong and then ends with a bang. Hold on, shout out to I think you're right. Baba Luca came out for me. Cognito knows what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about, bro. But um, yeah, back back to Anthem. He's stolen money. Listen, we all know the story of Anthem. Very disappointing. Tragic end. Bioware. The whole bit. But there are some news floating around, and um, apparently it's going to be an Anthem 2.0. An Anthem Next is in development, so there is a breath of life. They are not abandoning it. A shout-out to my boy Dizzy, who's got a great article on um, lordsgaming.net, putting it in there for y'all so y'all can see. Did the video go out? Because I just see no video. <laughs> Uh-oh, hopefully the video ain't out. But, um, yeah, man, it's a, it's a, it's a great article, and... Um, Basically, Jason Schreier has reported that they are in development. There is a serious rework going on, a serious revamp. And um, I believe the last person who left, Chad Robinson, he actually said it was in good hands. I know it doesn't sound good that he left. But, yeah, they're not giving up on it. So I just wanted to bring that out there, get your thoughts, you know, with the whole thing. You know, do they have a shot? And, um, you know, what, what's your thought process behind it? I mean, it's tough. That game burned everybody. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's not like a well-known franchise like Diablo that launched with Diablo 3 with some issues and then Diablo 3 2.0. People are like, hey, I did buy the game. So many people did because it was. Mm-hmm. I'm coming back because it's Blizzard. Okay, cool. They made it good. Right. No Man's Sky? I don't know how big the population is. I know a lot of people really enjoy Next, but I don't know how many right. people that is i don't know the size right. of the player base and while there may mm-hmm. be some people that be like hey you know no man's sky next is freaking awesome it's really cool but mm-hmm. if you have like two thousand people playing a game in the entire world it's not that many that are left so then it's like mm-hmm. what are your development efforts worth and again this is the point right. where anthem had a cool foundation the suits mm-hmm. felt cool like the lightning abilities from the storm like things were cool and fun Mm-hmm. For a little bit, but like the progression was not there. the The world was weird. The loading there there were so yeah. many issues in such a broken game. Mm-hmm. It was rough. Like they had they had what you would like. They had a technical demo. Is the best way yeah. I can describe that yeah. thing. Yeah, they had a technical demo. They had a mm-hmm. weird arbitrary story. They could have done a lot more build up before, build up after. But they had a cool technical demo, and I actually. Personally, I really enjoy the hell out of the technical demo. Yeah, like the absolutely. interceptor felt fun, fluid, fast, jumpy around, awesome, swipe here, go, go, go. Like he was cool, sitting up in the air, floating, storm, lightning, calling it down. Ooh. Like those bits were fun. But like yes. after a while, you're going, why am I still messing with these bits? They're cool to see, but it's like a VR tech demo. It's like it's a technical demonstration of what the what it can do. And I think with the crazy, insane history that that thing had. Mm-hmm. That piece of it yeah. was cool, but there just was yeah. nothing. They had built a framework of functionality, and there's nothing else on that game. So I don't know what they do if they like rebuild a story, do a prequel, send it forward, if they even connect it to the old thing, do a mm-hmm. Final Fantasy fourteen, blow up the world, and send you off to a new planet and start <laughs> over. I don't know, but however mm-hmm. they do it, I do think it's... I, I'd like to see something good happen to it, but I'm mm-hmm. definitely not going to hold my breath. I honestly thought it was fun like yeah, to fly around too. and do the stuff, but yeah. 
I just I think I mean, it's been burned too bad in like every community for it to ever have a chance. It's the tough. damage is done. I mean, here's the thing. This is what they're debating right now. I'll just go over it real quickly. The first thing they're debating is how they're going to do it. Is it going to be more of a larger update like a Taken King or a series of smaller updates? Then the other thing they're deciding, which is going to be very critical for them, is if it's going to be if this Anthem 2.0 is going to be like a DLC. Because at this point, do you have the audacity to charge people, even if it's completely revamped? Because they're talking about breaking up. One of the things they said, they said, we're looking at breaking up the need to go to Fort Tarsus after every mission. And then they're breaking down what mission structure is and the gameplay loop and how that whole thing is. Which is cool. I like that idea and that discussion of breaking away where you don't have to keep going back to Fort Tarsus again. Well, that means done, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. However, what's critical to me is they might have to eat any idea of trying to bring out a DLC because I think that's going to rub people the wrong way. That no, means they're going to say, oh, it's... you're going to ch yeah, charge me to fix your game? Only Destiny gets away with that. No. <laughs> Fair. Fair. But so seriously, I no, for them, cool. they have to do a, they cannot be small. It has to be one big update. I think that is yes. the only way you get people to even log back in is be like, Anthem, mm -hmm. like, 1.5 or whatever you call it yeah. brand new if you got it it's still there whatever yep. like that Basically, is the only way you'll ever get me back i can yeah. say that you gotta log in and it's gonna be it gotta be like a 30 gig download or whatever it is revamped it's gotta be free and you got you gotta really you gotta answer all the questions and 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 the thing that, that concerns people had you know, a lot of people had issues. A lot of people, you know, wanted to support, and they felt burnt. So that's all I got on it. I just wanted to bring it up, you know, because it's been a while. I, I saw the news. And listen, at the end of the day, I do hope they have a Taken King moment. As much as I clown, I do. it would be cool. And, and at least for next-gen hardware as well, because us on PC, we know how glorious that game can look. Yeah. Like when that game on PC, that game is phenomenal looking yeah. still to this day. It is one of the most beautiful looking games. Just so I think consoles oh, were flying away. Oh, bro, console is trash. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no disrespect, y'all. I mean, it's just, it's not it. it I, I, it's the, the CPUs can't handle it. No. But with next gen hardware, maybe they do it. You know, a year, a year or so, or whatever. Maybe you know, it comes out and see. You know, in and, and, and return, it's a better fashion. So that's all. Yeah, I just want to bring. All it. right. Well, one more thing before we go, because yes, I want to talk about it. Because why haven't we been playing Destiny that much? This game called Star Wars Fallen Order. I know this is typically Ooh. a Destiny podcast, but this is too damn good. We got to talk about it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How? Say what you want, man. I got a whole whole roll of going. stuff going in my head. Yeah. So you're, I'll let you're, you lead you're off. farther than me. And full disclosure, I am not a Star Wars guy. I'll be honest. I don't hate Star Wars. I'm just not the Star Wars hardcore guy that's going to tell you all this stuff and knows so deep about the lore. It's a cool, fun event for me. And the games, I'm like, meh. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've never been like, oh, this is so cool. I mean, maybe KOTOR back in the day. You know what I'm saying? But I will so I mean, obviously when it came out and then I seen who were making it, I was like, oh, this is Respawn. Respawn. Those my dudes. Next to Bungie, like Respawn, CD Projekt Red, there's a hierarchy. Namco, that's kind of where I, with my favorite guys, right? Obsidian's going up there too. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, Star Wars, but then when I saw Respawn, I'm like, okay, this could be good. To my opinion, Respawn has not made a whack game. That's how high I value Respawn. So then I went to E3, what is it? Oh, actually, it was yeah, this year, early this year. I had behind the scenes at the EA Play with this game. Didn't get a chance to play. It was a demo, closed behind the scene. Blown away. I was like, yo, this game looks cool. I'm very excited now, right? Now the game releases. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's get it. Let's see what's going on. This game, within the first 15 minutes, like we talked offline, the game felt like the game of the year. <laughs> Like, within the first 15 minutes of me playing this game, not only graphically it's amazing, not only the story beats, the platforming of, like, an Uncharted, the, the, the this game, I'm not a Star Wars guy like that. This game makes you feel like a Jedi. 
Like, I feel you, like you're in a Star Wars movie. Bro, the force powers and the thing, and then the same when you reflect a bullet back at somebody, and it, it, this thing is, and then the thing that I really like is one thing, Attic and I, we're big about boss battles. Oh. This thing gives you the epic feel of a clash with the cinematic flavor, and you're like, yo, like, they really have knocked this thing out of the park. I'm only a couple of hours in, maybe four or five hours in. I'm going to get back to it. But, yeah, shout out to Blackwing. It's like Star Wars, Dark Souls, you know, Tomb Raider, they, and Uncharted had a baby. And you just mix it with this great Star Wars universe. And it's just, it's, it's cool, man. So I'm going to let you talk. I know you've got way more hours than me. How's your experience? Where are you oh, at? I mean... To, I would it. give it like nine out of ten. Um, it's definitely up there. It's not running perfectly smooth, so I mean optimization isn't perfect. Um, there are a couple things here and there, but over like still nine out of ten easy for me on this one. That's just like nitpicky stuff. Combat is hella fun. Uh, it's challenging. I'm playing on Jedi. What difficulty are you playing on? There's a question. Yeah, I ain't doing that Secret Row stuff you doing. No, what are you doing? I'm on three of whatever four. The, I'm not whatever on the, the normal one. is. Whatever normal is, I don't know normal what... human, that's me. Normal human mode. <laughs> whatever the default I'm on was. Jedi Master, which is like, if oh, you look Lord. at the bars, they're, no, they're all in the middle, and then mm. there's Grand Master below that. I'm not on that. Oh, okay. okay. No, I'm not okay. doing, I'm not doing like minute frame, perfect precision blocks and everything. I'm not, mm. I did want to kind of enjoy the game because I got other stuff yeah. I got to do. I can't beat myself against yep. the boss forever, but... Mm -hmm. uh, Jedi Master is like, and I heard that's what they designed the game around. Mm -hmm. So it feels, I think Paul Tassi had a like headline of like, mm -hmm. um, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is baby's first Dark Souls and that's okay. That's why I like it. <laughs> Cause I ain't doing that sucker old craziness. Now, I want my sanity. <laughs> yeah. And Shout you can, you. I mean, you can go difficult if you want to. So they mm -hmm. give you the option. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but overall, I think um, it's it feels because I was in the middle of a boss battle literally last night before I went to sleep. I tripped into another one, and when I and I was just going through, it took me four or five tries. I think not like a Sekiro, like twenty five, thirty. Oh my God! It was four or five. Not too bad. I mean, it's not Grandmaster, but man, when you go in there, and then I'm not gonna spoil anything because when you see it, it happens. But when you're going through, you're blocking, and you get the perfect moment, and you're like, you see him coming, you got the unblockable, so you got to dodge, you get around, you get the swipe behind, but they're back in it, and like the bosses are legit, so they're quick to get back, mm -hmm. and you're blocking, working down their stamina meter. Mm -hmm. Like, Dark Souls games feel cool, and this is almost mm -hmm. why, for me, like, Sekiro, one of my friends really didn't like it as much, because it was not mm -hmm. the, you had to learn the parry. You yes, had to learn the parry, parry, you. ninja, ting, 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 dodge, yep. shoom. Like, you had to get your shots in, but you had to parry. That was crucial, and I think that's what mm -hmm. this is. It's not just dodge. You can do right. the just dodging like Dark Souls, but the parry is where you'll break their stamina quicker. Yeah. Dude, and it feels that, like, bam, and you time it perfect, and it's like, oh, and it, like, staggers them back. And that, that cinematic flair when you do it. Yeah, it's like there's a little slowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's really cool, and I think this, like, Sekiro trained me to better, be a better Jedi, so yes, <laughs> Sekiro yes. is Jedi trainer in advance, mm -hmm. and but yeah, it's like I mean, so many people have been like, it's Uncharted and Dark Souls. You've got climbing, you've got vines, you've got mobility, you've got a little bit of platforming, not too much, but there's While some. While we're in saying there. this, the Destiny servers are completely offline. What? Just yeah, <laughs> Destiny yeah, servers are shot right now. Yeah, shout out to uh, lo my boy the Loco with the Fofo and uh, Vagabondo. Yeah, man, he said, yeah, Destiny 1 and 2, they investigated. So we picked a good time to talk about Jedi. <laughs> Fall in yep. order. All morning all, long. All I guess we'll see about sin? Zerv video. Wow. Of, I'll get to Zerv in a second before we go. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of good massive. Good, perfect segue, yeah. by the way. <laughs> segue away. As soon as we stop talking about Destiny, I guess we got to talk about Destiny for the servers to come back. It's all us. We have control. <laughs> it's all the Jedi mind powers that we've got. We've controlled. That's, it, man. that's crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But just like I was yeah, playing continue. the boss battle, and even though I died four or five times, I mm -hmm. was literally loving every minute of it because I was like, sweet, I get to do this battle again. Because when you go up against stormtroopers, I'm like, oh, you shoot, ting. Yeah, I blocked it and sent it back to him. Like, that's not that's not the challenge part. Like, I mm -hmm. like the harder enemies in this game yes. because the fights feel good. It feels, yes. Oh, you're yes. just like, 
And it's like you got the purge troopers, the black ones with kind of like whatever's mm-hmm. going on. I found, found a new one. Those are awesome. Um, and shout out like flora and fauna. You got plants and you got animals. The fauna mm-hmm. will kick your butt in this game. Yes. Dude, there's like, oh, this like ram slug thing. And I was like, what are mm-hmm. you vomiting like? acid breath and then there's this big crazy giant butt bug jumping on me i'm like what is happening right now Bro, <laughs> and i'm like running crazy. away from fly- fireflies and slugs and bugs and i'm like mm-hmm. i am terrified more of those than i am the humans yo you know what i got a shout about though respawn knows one of my favorite games that they made is titanfall right one of the things titanfall did that re to me just rechange change the game as far as uh, platforming, is that wall run. Mm. When I saw that install, I said, yes. That, I love that 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 mobility. I mean, it, again, and I just love how the different, the skill tree. We didn't even talk about the skill tree. You know, like, like, yeah. it, it is, it, it's really cool, man. And they, they got one. And it's a travesty, speaking of Game Awards. I think it's the time it this, launched, and that's all. But actually, it did beat the deadline. But they made a consensus jury call not to include it because I guess they felt, oh, we're not, you know, we don't want to spend the time to uh, review it. We may not have enough time to review it in their defense. But it's a travesty because now it can't be, well, I think they're going to make an except technically, but due to their rules, it technically can't even be included next year. But I hear the rumor is they're going to include it. But here's the problem. We year, all know. Year later. Yeah. yeah. Last of Us 2 is coming. And um, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Yeah. Those are heavy it is. It's, it's literally those two. So Destiny it's like. Destiny 3. three. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I got hey, that inside. No, I don't. I have no I'm going to act like you didn't even say it. <laughs> But it's just, it's just, yeah. It, it sucks because to me, again, I've played the majority of all these games that are nominated. The smashes, the you know controls, the Sekiro. No disrespect, but when I play Jedi, again two hours in, this feels like the game of the year to me. That's just my opinion. I'm not. I haven't played Death Stranding. I know it's very polarizing. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the FedEx workers out there. But at the end of the day, I'm just telling you how I feel. I feel this game right here is it. That's just me. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. there's the skill tree in it is similar to Sekiro, where you open up different abilities and different like mm-hmm. slashes or dodges mm-hmm. or things like that. So the skill tree is cool. Uh, so for nitpicks, um, mm-hmm. the mudslides yes. are a bit excessive and long. They're in there a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the mudslides. <laughs> that is, they are either mud or ice. I haven't seen water yet. But at some I point, I can I can ice skate on my boots or mud mm-hmm. skate down long hills, still mm-hmm. have enough force to jump across crazy crevices and, mm-hmm. and still keep going. So the other piece is the boxes. All the boxes you open, every single one of them, mm-hmm. they're kind of lackluster in the cosmetic. You have, like, pieces for your lightsaber. Oh, you're talking you about You have skins for BD1 or you have skins for your ship. But I was like, I don't know what else I want in those, but I want something else in those. Because that is like, I see the box, I'm like, yeah, it's white. I have to go get the box. Cool. Mm-hmm. But what's in it? Nothing, really. Yeah. Like, I don't. Okay, so you want a little, little bit of cosmetics. We'll look I was like, a little fly. bit more of something. I don't know what. Did you get what. That, that double lightsaber, though? Did you get that dual? Spoiler. That's why I didn't say anything. All right, damn it. I thought most people knew about it, but okay. I guess I don't I'll, know I'll if take they did or not. Okay, I'll there's the a double lightsaber, everybody. Sorry, sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, so, hey, trust me, I almost said it earlier, but I stopped myself because mm-hmm. when when it happened, he's like, "Oh, he's like, I'm gonna put this hilt on my on my uh, lightsaber." I was like, "Oh, cool, you're gonna keep it as like a keepsake." And then it mm-hmm. comes out the other side. I was like, "Holy shit!" Ooh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Bye. that was sick. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, I mean that one and. Okay, fine. Now that we know it exists, the boss fight I just got done doing? First phase, single. Oh, halfway through? The, the boss go. goes both. So I'm like, all right, I'll match you. And then you Let's just start going it. ham on it. Dude, it's so Fire. much. It's so cool. Fighting an ad ad. Yeah. Oh. Or AT, no, the ATST. That's the little one. Fighting the yeah. little guy. Um, 
Those are cool, like, like force powers that you get. Oh, and the, sorry, the other description. It's also a Metroidvania. Yes. Shao Vagabano, does it need... I don't think it requires an internet connection at all. I don't think you have to be to EA servers. I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. you can play offline completely. Pretty sure they said full single player, no microtransactions, just straight up Star Wars game. He just wants to know if there's any internet connection. I know some single players have had that foolishness, but I don't think... I don't think I haven't seen like to connecting to servers or anything. I really yeah. Haven't. There's nothing that I don't see connecting to when you play that game. It's very minimalistic when you start at the title screen. Yeah. So yeah, I, I didn't see that, but um, yeah, I, it's it's a pickup, guys. I'm telling you right now. It, this, yeah, I mean, this I can't is, I can't recommend it enough either. It's yeah. Shout out to Respawn, man. Again, I'm telling y'all, they haven't made a whack game. These are the guys that made the the Call of Duties that transitioned to Modern Warfare when it first came out 60 frames per second when it was a thing in the 360 generation I mean these guys they had Titanfall I think Titanfall 2 has one of the best stories oh and no no spoiler shout out to my boy Addict who finished Fallen Order from I've heard this from three people now no spoilers it gets better that it as you is, go it is one of listen Addict is the most picky reviewer I know it is one of the best endings I am hearing People are people are saying, wait till you end it. It is mind blowing. That's what people are telling me. And for hear that from my boy Addict, Addict don't he will nitpick greatness. For him, I was like, oh, I gotta see. And I, I heard two other friends that I trust. They just said, yeah. Oh yeah, shout out to all right. See, the only negative the way he be running. Yeah, yeah. He, the running animation is a little, little, little spooky. Yeah, somebody uh, said that in my stream last night. Yeah. And I'm like running around. I'm like, he looks like. Sometimes robotic, and then other yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a little janky on the road. It's a little, little jank. So. Little and that's what I was like, if you're going to go nitpicky, I was like, okay, the skating is a little like kind of goofy. Like the yeah. boxes, the cosmetics are kind of lackluster. If you're going to go hunt them all down, it's pretty collectible, like minimal mm -hmm. stuff. But I mean, overall gameplay, running around the exploration, like the place I just got done fighting that boss, mm -hmm. the scale of what I just got done doing, just Tremendous. huge. And I don't want to spoil mm -hmm. it for you, but it's just like. Oh yeah. There's a there's a very specific movie it references. Mm -hmm. And when you get there you'll know. So mm -hmm. And it just yeah. feels like this dope you know, even though it's self contained, like it, it's such a good story, right? That it's like, yo, like you you want this to be a series. It's so good, I don't want it to be a one off. You know what I'm saying? Like I want this to stay a rap. That's how good this thing is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean as the Blackwing said, you've got like Mandalorian. Fallen mm -hmm. Order, Rise of Skywalker next. Oh, yeah, like Star Wars yeah. fans are loving life right now. They're having Absolutely. a great time. Disney Plus is out there. You can go watch everything again. Mm -hmm. It's a good time. So, but man, yeah. for me, I will be streaming the rest of that thing. Uh, it is mm -hmm. so much fun, and mm -hmm. it's been hard. I was like, I had that, and I was like, do I care about finishing Festival Lost? I was like, nah. I yeah. let the two tribes go. <laughs> I literally yeah. let them go, and they probably weren't. Even, it, they were literally bounties and tears, and I was Same just like. Thing. It's Same not thing. a big deal like, for I, me. I was like, not, I wasn't worried about him. I was like, mm -mm, I don't care. I'm good. I'm good with what I got. I'm fine. It's like I need to I, farm my undying stuff. I gotta spin. I gotta balance my time splitting those. But it's hard, man. Mm -hmm. It's almost why I need mm -hmm. to burn through Star Wars quicker, just so I can yeah. get back and like at least check that box. And oh, so good. Yeah. So Dude, we had to talk out about out. it. We'll keep going. If one of mm -hmm. us finishes it, then. Whoever finishes mm -hmm. it first, just don't spoil it for the next. But when we do Absolutely. finish it, we'll have to probably bring it, bring it back just to kind of, yeah, holy crap, round table it. So, yes, sir. Shout but I think that's all we got that. for the week, guys. We are coming yeah, up man. on two hours, just about perfectly. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you guys for tuning in this morning. It's been awesome. Yeah. Um, nice. Star Wars: Fallen nice. Order can't recommend it enough. Destiny Two, you guys got to see what's next. <laughs> Yeah, we got two, three weeks for them to save the day. <laughs> yeah, next week's going to be light. So, like, yeah. the next season no starts word. on December 10th. So, the TWAB mm -hmm. on December 5th is going to be a big one. Oh, I have yeah, a feeling gonna that's going to be just hopefully the bomb drop. Mm -hmm. so, That'll be huge. That will be the key. Well, what do you got going mm -hmm. on for the weekend? You you doing yeah, much man. with the, the ILP brethren over there at the round table? Yes, sir. I got a nice one, man. We got a special guest, man. It's going to be developer for Two Ton Studios. They're going to be showcasing, well, I say showcasing, and they're going to be discussing their new upcoming game. It's called Unto the End. So if you, basically, if anyone that doesn't know about it, it's um, it's basically going to be, if you like games like Inside, you like games like Limbo, Out of This yep. World, Atmospheric, the game doesn't tell you, difficult, but also it's going to, it's, 
pretty much look it's, it's this it's like the character looks like Tormund from Game of Thrones mm, and yeah. he's trying to get his family back in this world and you just gotta figure it out so shout out to Two Ton Studios they will be on the Iron Lord podcast Sunday 11 a.m. Um, Eastern it's a it's a dope uh, studio it's a actually a small studio husband and wife team wow you know what I'm saying so it's like literally you and Summer made a game <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like literally, like, and, and they've been working on it for the last three years. So it's pretty awesome. Please check us out. Support on the Island Podcast YouTube Sunday 11 a.m. Eastern. Check us out. We'll have the rest of the Lords in there. We're probably sneaking maybe one or two topics. And of course, you know, please support LordsOfGaming.net. Some great articles you can find that Anthem article I just told you about. That it's uh, if it's still dying, it has its last breath. As well as the other great writers. There's a oh, there's a Jedi. We got our Jedi Fallen Order review up right now. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. My boy Lord Hector has been killing it. So please check that out. And of course, King of Statues, all that good stuff for the channel. I really appreciate the support lately. It's been really cool to see a little bit of growth. But um, yeah, man, that's what I got. And of course, on Fridays, the best damn Destiny podcast you going to hear what? is the last word, Cheetah and Ninja style, doing it up, providing entertainment, and salute to the chat. Y'all, y'all's giving us life today. Very entertaining, very funny. It's always a pleasure to do this for you guys. Always fun. Yeah, uh, I mean, we kind of covered a lot this week on ups and downs and things of that nature, but the big thing is go out there, have a little bit of fun. If you enjoy any of the type of games that we described, Metroid crossed with Uncharted, crossed with Dark Souls, and you enjoy Star Wars, get your butt in that game. It's awesome so far. Pick your difficulty. You don't have to kill yourself forever, but go in, have a blast, mm -hmm. enjoy it, mm -hmm. and... Mm -hmm. Uh, I think this is where we'll wrap it up. So this has been episode number 82. It is November 22nd of our joyous podcast that I do with my ninja co-host over here. So this is the Cheetah and the Ninja signing off for episode 82. Thank you, sir, 82. for this one. It's been a blast. Thank you, everybody in chat. If you enjoy it, drop a like, leave a comment, check the comments to check mm -hmm. out where to support us. And it has been The, the Last, last Word. word.